Thank you very much, uh, Professor Chun Su Yi, for your kind introduction. And uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm very honored to be here and uh, make a presentation in front of uh, active professors and the students in the research field of steel. Well, title of my talk today is uh, Hydrogen Embrittlement in uh, Iron Manganese Carbon High Strength Austenitic Steels. Before moving on to uh, my talk, uh, let me just uh, repeat my situation. So, I had moved uh, from NIMS to Kyushu University in the last April, but uh, I'm still keep a position at the NIMS and uh, for uh, three or four days a month in Tsukuba. So uh, sometimes I use the uh, old email address and the new address. Uh, I can tell you both addresses are available. And uh, this is outline and abstract of my talk today as a background and a motivation, I will tell you uh, many kinds of high manganese steels have been developed since Hadfield Steel in 1882. And what I did is just tensile testing and uh, hydrogen charging. And I found the reduced ductility in high uh, iron high manganese carbon steels. And then I did a fractography where I found, I evaluated the crack path along grain and twin boundaries. And then hydrogen embrittlement in single crystalline 316 austenitic, austenitic steel is investigated and found that uh, there is an orientation dependence of reduced ductility. That is all content of my talk today. So, high manganese steels. High manganese austenitic steels are used as Hadfield steel, 1882, Shape memory alloy, damping material, seismic resistant steel, transformation induced plasticity to rip steel, and twinning induced plasticity to whip steel. More than that, but you look at the, uh, this one, oh, high manganese steels uh, variety. And twip steel, twinning induced plasticity steel among the high manganese steel is expected to be used for automobile material. This figure is quoted from the paper of Dr. Kwan Posco when he had uh, invited or keynote uh, lecture in the first High Manganese Steels Conference in uh, 2011 in Seoul. At the time, it was expected, but uh, if I remember correctly, trip steel has been already used in the automobile car. Is it right? And uh, I think. Uh, at least a bumper beam, it's an application port, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. So uh, it's okay, all right? I can move on, okay? So why twip steels used for uh, automotive car? People want to use uh, this figure uh, many times. So twip steel has uh, high strength 
and high ductility. This is uh, tensile strength and uh, total elongation. All steels and the material belongs to this tendency. So people call this a banana curve, but uh, even in a advanced trip steel, best one among this is located right here. But uh, look at the uh, position of a trip steel. Well, wow, very good. You can show the uh, more than 50% in the total elongation, even at the very high st tensile strength level, uh, more than 1,000 megapascal, one gigapascal. It is good, however, we don't have uh, any Superman. So the, this excellent mechanical property of uh, mainly derived from the uh, displacive mechanism such as a multi transformation and the deformation twinning. So, but it is good. But uh, trip steel is not a uh, Superman. So then uh, that means that there is a drawbacks. Look at this. High manganese steels undergo premature fracture. I tell you what is a premature fracture later. And a variety of uh, microstructure condition, such as uh, stress concentration at tips of epsilon time molten site plate, uh, which is the H. CP phase, FCC deformation twins intersecting and uh, interact uh, with the grain and the uh, phase boundaries at cemented particles and or in a manganese enriched segregation zone at the green boundaries and more in interaction zones between annealing twin boundaries and Ipsum mountain site. And this is uh, one of a model to explain a, a premature fracture occurred by uh, Ipsum mountain site. Uh, I picked it up at uh, this figure from the paper of uh, Professor Setsuo uh, Takaki, also Kyushu University uh, Journal, ISIJ International, 1990. This is the uh, primary Ipsum mountain site. This is a tensile stress. Tensile stress should be uh, uh, rotated at least uh, 45 or close to do that. Then secondary Ipsum mountain site form in a further tensile deformation as you can easily consider this position has a highly okay, stressed local stress condition. Then you may have a boys at the tip or a cross section of a two plates. It makes a tunnel like boys at the intersection. So uh, this is a, a model for a premature fracture. And uh, moreover, there is a drawbacks. I'm sorry to say, stress corrosion cracking, hydrogen embrittlement are observed. In particular, hydrogen embrittlement has recently become a point of major interest due to trip steel is going to be used automotive and safety relevant parts for carbon reduced industry infrastructure. So, you know, the hydrogen embrittlement is the uh, topics of today, of my talk, which is uh, caused by a uh, cap forming in case of a uh, trip steel. And cap forming 
and the subsequent exposure, the edge of a cap has many cracks. It was found in 15 manganese point six carbon steel, 16 manganese point six carbon steel, 15 manganese point seven carbon three aluminum steel, 17 manganese point six carbon, and more stable 22 manganese point six carbon trip steel. So uh, you can find some of the uh, name of uh, GIFT professor here. And the tensile test after electro uh, chem uh, chemical hydrogen charging also uh, demonstrated the hydrogen embrittlement. Uh, iron, manganese, carbon, aluminum, austenitic steels. Uh, this was found in the, uh, this okay, in uh, in ninety four, and fracture mode shown in the literature was intergranular fracture. Number six and eight, and another GIFT uh, professor. I can't him today, and I had. He is in uh, Spain today. Great, all right. Please say hello to him when he was back. When he is back, all right? All right. And so many things, but uh, there are some open questions at the stage, at the year, in the year 2011 about the uh, feature of a tensile behavior of high manganese austenitic steels containing hydrogen. Number one, effect of hydrogen on stress strain response, especially uh, yield stress, work hardening. Yield stress is changed by hydrogen charging. How about your change in the work hardening? Second, effect of hydrogen on fracture stress or fracture strain. So uh, I would like to know the uh, relationship between a fracture stress and hydrogen content in the material. Third, effect of uh, hydrogen on fracture mode. So uh, usually ductile material shows a dimple fracture mode. But the, uh, if hydrogen embrittlement is occurred in uh, high manganese austenitic steel, what is uh, a fault? Especially crack propagation path related to uh, microstructure. I would like to know that. So our recent work with the aim of getting more experimental evidence. Then we can manage to wide use of a trip steel under the well, tough condition, including the hydrogen entry uh, condition. Okay. So we need a reliability for designing. So uh, that is a background. And let me move on the uh, uh, experimental result. First, I used this alloy, 18 manganese, 0.6 carbon, ternary trip steel, because uh, this is a well, typical uh, trip steel. Is it okay? Is this a typical? Not yet? POSCO people here today, no? No, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, anyhow, uh, since, uh, I uh, uh, received uh, this material from the uh, POSCO people. It must be a uh, uh, typical, right? And but uh, well, industrial uh, uh, material uh, is chemical a bit different from this one. So uh, this is uh, at least one of a uh, typical trip steel. And uh, heat treatment. This is a cold rolled seat, and then the heat treated. 
at this temperature and time. You can see a microstructure, uh, pretty fine grain size structure with a random texture. You can see uh, many colors on it. That means the texture is random. And the highest intensity is 1.4. Okay? One is the average. Uh, this is a microstructure. And this is the schematic drawing of my uh, test equipment and the sample. Conventional instrument type tensile machine is here. And we put the, uh, this Solution bath in uh, solution is the uh, NaCl solution with the uh, a bit of a chemical for the uh, uh, making a hydrogen entry easy. And uh, with this set of uh, uh, equipment, we can charge the hydrogen by electric charging with a different level of a current density, 0, 1, 3, 5, and 10 ampere per square meter. Then you can control the uh, hydrogen amount of a specimen, at least the uh, very surface area of a specimen. I have to tell you the uh, geometry of specimen. That is a seed, a thin seed, 0.3 millimeter. 0.3 millimeter, right? And I selected the, uh, a low strain rate, five times 10 to minus fifth per second, uh, to make a uh, uh, promoted hydrogen effect. Uh, that is the, uh, uh, I mean the uh, long, uh, enough time for uh, uh, hydrogen entry during a uh, testing. This is the, uh, uh, I, I did it, uh, I set uh, this situation, and then uh, uh, I push the uh, uh, charging uh, equipment button, and then soon after that, I started a tensile test, right? So the uh, tensile test and uh, hydrogen charging. So then uh, hydrogen come into the uh, specimen from the surface during uh, uh, testing, tensile testing. That is a situation. And first, I'd like to uh, show you uh, stress strain curve. Left engineering stress strain curve, right true stress, uh, true strain curve. First look, uh, no change. Let me tell you the uh, uh, detail. Zero, no charging located here in blue. One, green, almost identical position. No change. However, three, five, ten, you can see the reduced elongation. However, work hardening rate doesn't change, or I should say almost identical, regardless of hydro condition of hydrogen charging. So with this result, you can say yield stress and work hardening behavior isn't changed, but elongation is reduced very much. Okay? So uh, in this context, hydrogen can have a multiple effect. When you look at the uh, literature, it was reported that hydrogen entry into austenitic steel reduces they are stacking for energy. 32, 33. So 
very old time white man and Troiano reported that these things 1964 and uh, uh, later 30 years ago the similar uh, argument was done. This reduction in the stacking fault energy promotes Ipsion multisetic transformation and deformation twinning, which results in a marked change in the stress strain response. Is it okay? So if the condition for the uh, twinning formation or multisetic transformation condition then you may have an increase in the work hardening rate. However, our case, no change in the work hardening rate. Please keep, in, please keep this result in your mind. And then premature fracture. So premature fracture are us usually, usually a plastic instability is satisfied for the ductile material. Uh, plastic instability is a condition through stress becomes lower than the uh, uh, D sigma or over the epsilon work hardening rate. So such a, a plastic instability condition is satisfied this Low, no charge or low hydrogen charging condition. Blue and green hit the, this plastic instability condition. Then necking occurs, then final fracture. However, at this condition, fracture occurs before the material meets a plastic instability condition, like this, like this. So this is a premature fracture. So what happened here? Before talking about uh, considering, uh, con talking about uh, premature fracture, uh, I should say the uh, hydrogen entry this is a TDA profile after a uh, tensile test. We did a TDA analysis at a heating rate of 100 Kelvin per hour and with a condition of 0, 1, 3, 5, and 10 ampere per square meter. You can see the 90 degree C peak is almost constant for the uh, all condition like this. And uh, we did this one within a 20 minutes after fracture. And if you plot the diffusible hydrogen content, uh, accumulated the hydrogen content up to a this temperature, plotted by uh, uh, current density, increases like this. So uh, hydrogen entry up to a 1.7 weight ppm was observed. But be careful, this hydrogen is not the value of average okay, distribution in a sample because of a very, very low diffusivity of hydrogen in austenitic steel. Usually, a uh, 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 researcher uh, emphasizes that hydrogen can move or diffuse so quickly. But that is a case in a ferritic steel. In the austenitic steel, hydrogen diffusivity is very low, at least four order magnitude lower than that of a ferritic steel. And another information, this hydrogen can go away when you keep the sample at the room temperature for 
10 days. After 10 days keep, you cannot see any peak on the uh, TDA profile. This profile changes to this. This means hydrogen of 90 degrees C peak is diffusible one. And when you look at your photography, uh, this is a fracture surface. Uh, no, 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 no. This is a specimen surface. So uh, uh, tensile direction is normal to the uh, screen. Can you see the dimple? Uh, I'm afraid uh, uh, this photo isn't clear enough. So those dimple is observed even in the near surface here. In case of an uncharged one and one nampere, uh, where no reduced ductility was observed. But if you look at the, uh, a more severe condition of hydrogen charging, another feature is clearly seen. This is a center part. You can see a dimple. However, different feature of a fractography is seen in a near surface in the range of 0.1 millimeter, like a brittle uh, fracture surface. Such a fracture feature is also observed 10 ampere per square meter. I will show you uh, enlarged observation here in the next slide. And you can see a uh, uh, several intergranular fracture port here, 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 and also subcrack here. So uh, this is a conclusion for a first part. Stress strain response, no change for yield strength, work hardening rate. However, reduced ductility is clearly seen. Hydrogen entry surely uh, observed, and hydrogen content is increased with the current density. And one more thing, these hydrogen can diffuse at room temperature. And fractography told you that feature of intergranular fracture. And if I plot the true fracture stress in relation with the hydrogen entry, I can make a this figure. This portion and this portion. And this degradation region, fractography is, was the intergranular fracture, which is uh, different from a ductile dimple fracture. And in this condition, we observe the plastic instability condition for fracture. So a uh, premature fracture due to a uh, hydrogen entry is associated with the uh, intergranular fracture. I think it is clear. So then you may have a uh, further question for hydrogen enrichment. Effect of a sample shape, especially thickness. How about the thickness? My case is a 0.3 millimeter in six, very thin. How about the, okay, uh, thickness effect? Effect of a phase stability of a lot. I use the 15, uh, 18 manganese 0.6 carbon, okay, and especially uh, FC, uh, SCP mountain site because uh, well, several people said okay, Epsilon mountain site formation of Epsilon mountain site degrade affects the uh, uh, ductility. So that effect of a deformation twins, uh, especially how about the interaction of a twin twin. 
So then, first I check the uh, sample thickness. This is the result of a thicker specimen. Specimen thickness changed to 1.2 millimeter from 0.3 millimeter. And the same current, uh, highest current uh, condition. This is uncharged condition, hydrogen charged condition. So you can see a reduced ductility in this case. I'm sure no change in the yield strength and the work hardening rate in the initial stage or early stage of a deformation, but slightly change in uh, this region. And hydrogen charged one shows the uh, fracture before it meets the uh, uh, instability, plastic instability condition like this. However, the hydrogen uncharged one plastic instability condition is met. So, uh, reduced ductility is observed in a thicker specimen with 1.2 millimeter. Then, phase stability. To get to a more stable material, I change chemicals in the carbon to 1.2 weight percent from 0.6 uh, carbon because this is more stable against ACP epsilon time molten site. But still, uh, reduced ductility is observed like this. And even in this case, hydrogen is classified as a diffusible one. Uh, I'm sorry, this is a case. Uh, non-charged okay, sample and the charged sample. I'm very sorry about that. In this case, uh, in total, 1.1 weight ppm hydrogen is introduced into a specimen for this case. And uh, fractography, I'm afraid the contrast isn't good so much. Uh, but, uh, in this case, well, this is a sickness of a, a plate, a tensile a sample, and center region uh, larger ductile, but the uh, outer regions, you can see the brittle feature, and uh, many, many sub-cracks are seen. In addition, clear intergranular uh, fracture. So then, but we try this to observe the crack propagation path associated with the microstructure. B is here, C is here, and this one, the yeah, EBSD pattern, overlapped here, and when you look at here, this area, small sub-cracks are seen. This is a key view, and the corresponding EBSD view, and you can see a crack here, crack here, crack here, and this is a, a twin relation I have to tell you the uh, lead line tells you the uh, sigma three twin boundary, and but the future is like this. So crack penetrating the uh, well formerly primary twin. So then this is a uh, uh, this F is an enlarged uh, view or achy view. Well, it's uh, quite difficult. However, if you look at the uh, carefully, this is the, uh, some bright line uh, corresponds to a uh, secondary twin. So then uh, this small zigzag crack pass 
the uh, primary crack and secondary, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, primary twins and the secondary twins along one, one minus one and one minus one, one. So this is the uh, uh, a schematic. A crack propagates along the grain boundaries and twin boundaries. So in this work, I cannot tell you the uh, origin of a crack or a nucleation site of a crack. What I can tell you is uh, just crack propagation path. So uh, stress concentration occurs the uh, primary twin and intersection the grain boundary and also the uh, uh, secondary twins and the primary twins. And uh, there is a tendency the uh, crack uh, propagates along the uh, primary twins and the secondary twins. So then, uh, this is a story of a crack pass uh, propagation. Uh, and the uh, next question would be, is reduced ductility observed in a single crystalline sample with a deformation twin? Because uh, once crack form, it can propagate easily twinning boundary. So then uh, deformation twinning may effect, effect it even in a, a single crystal and the hydrogen entry may affect the ductility through the twin hydrogen interaction. So then what we did is uh, I selected, the, I uh, received the 316 steel, austenitic steel, single crystal used by uh, uh, Bridgman method from uh, uh, Russian uh, professors and the thickness was uh, 0.5 millimeter and we selected the two orientation, one is a 111, the other is a 100 because twinning becomes a major deformation mode for 111, but it isn't a major, but minor for 100 tensile type. Result is like this. Because of uh, uh, twinning, mark the twinning, the 111 orientation shows the uh, higher yield of stress and the higher work hardening rate than the uh, 100 orientation. If you look at the effect of hydrogen charging, the reduced ductility is significantly observed in the 111. But the, such a degradation is small for the 100 tensile orientation. And hydrogen entry is reasonably similar for both orientation. I can say reduced ductility in the 111 single crystal is more remarkable than fractography. This one is uh, uh, without hydrogen charging. So uh, this, this part, this center part, uh, sandwiched by arrows is a final fracture region. That means the uh, uh, Nicking and uh, local uh, deformation was significantly occurred in this case, and the reduction in area is uh, very large, and that is uh, similar for the uh, 111 also, but the, uh, this width is uh, much larger than this because of a uh, high strength level would be. This is, and but the dimples are observed here. But the, uh, with the hydrogen charging, well, that flash shape, very flat like uh, fracture surface is, and for the uh, 100, but the uh, 111 case, it's something zigzag feature. 
I think you can see the zigzag. And uh, we thought, we considered, we believed it must be uh, uh, associated with the feature of a twinning. In a 100 case, well, twin uh, scarcely observed, very, very scarcely observed. Only uh, uh, one twin in, uh, okay, one millimeter uh, uh, length observation in a specimen. However, the uh, many, many twins should be uh, formed in a one, one, one tensile direction specimen. In the zigzag brittle feature should be uh, associated with the twin twin interaction. Then we made an achy image of a deformation twinning in the one, one, one single crystal. Uh, in this case, without hydrogen charging. You can see the uh, deformation twins here, deformation twins here. So at least, at least three uh, deformation twin can be observed on this uh, observation plane. So I can tell you the significant twinning of a primary, secondary is confirmed in this single crystal. So, conclusion. The tensile tests during the in-situ hydrogen charging were conducted in high manganese carbon steels, which are stable against BCC and SCP molten site. Hydrogen entry up to 1.7 weight ppm was obtained. Second is the strength and the work hardened behavior didn't change. Third, elongation was markedly decreased. Fourth, cracks propagated along grain boundaries and twin boundaries in near surface regions. Fifth, reduced elongation was observed in the 111 oriented single crystal with twinning. So then, what we can do with this kind of information? So uh, if you want to reduce the uh, degradation of uh, elongation by a hydrogen entry, what you can do is to at least control the uh, twinning. However, further study is necessary for hydrogen deformation twin interaction to conclude. Uh, especially what we need is hydrogen interfacial nanostructure uh, interaction. I think uh, uh, acknowledgement. Uh, most of us still used in the present study were uh, provided by POSCO. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, POSCO. So, uh, Motomichi Koyama thanks uh, uh, some fellowship. Thank you for your kind attention.